Hello and welcome! Today I'm going to show you how to mix the stretch basic and the horizontal break in your orchestration. Here's my melody. So, my goal is to share the melody between horns and the trumpets. But I need to check whether my decision will be right and what I will encounter. To do this, as I have pointed out in our previous lectures, you have to determine the top and the low notes of the melody before making the device. Then you have to check the boundaries on the chat. I'm going to use chat number one of the best combinations of unison and active doublings. Let me check if my melody will be in the best registers of the trumpets and horns. If I give the melody to the horns, they will be between C4 and C5. Actually, this is the top limit of the best register of the horn, but can be used. What about the trumpets? If I double the horns and active higher trumpets, then the trumpets will be between C5 and C6. As you can see, this is a very high register of the trumpet, which is indicated with dashed lines. Of course, this register is also can be used, but I prefer to use the best register of the instruments instead of the top limit. And how to do it? If I transpose the given melody down to the A major, then the boundary will be A3 and A4. Now, look here. Both horns and trumpets are on their best of best registers as I avoided using the top limits by transposing the melody down. All instruments will be heard more clearly and brightly. This melody is also can be orchestrated in G major or F major. So the melodic device is done. Now is the time to add the different methods around the melody. I prefer to start with the bass line. Next is to add the horizontal break below the device. I'm going to write the three part harmony, however, four and even five part harmony can be used. This horizontal broken chord can be shared between the woodwinds, strings, or brass, depending on your choice. My decision is the brass section. The low bass line is performed by contrabasses and contrabassoon, while the cello, bass clarinet, and tuba double them an active higher. The broken harmony is on the trombones. I already added the breathing time for the players. This is necessary to do it in multi-bar textures to keep the stable rhythm and dynamic. The trombones play at mezzo forte, as I wanted a bit soft background than the melody. However, other instruments are at forte. Sounds good. Next is to fill the empty space between devices by adding the basic variant of the stretch method. I have an idea of how to stretch the harmony. But the question is how to write the correct articulations and how to decide. 
For this, you have to know the pronunciation of the articulations. Let me explain it with examples. If the notes are written without slur, the pronunciation will be as follow. Didada, didada. After adding the staccato or staccatissimo marking, the figure will sound a bit short. Titata, titata. If I add the slur and connect all notes under one bow stroke, the pronunciation will be diaya, diaya. But if the short end is needed, then you have to write the staccato above the last note. It will sound like this. Diap, diap. The first and the second notes can be slurred, while the last note can be re-articulated. The pronunciation will be like diada, diada. Of course, you can change the place of the slur. It will sound like didaya, didaya. Conclusion: All these pronunciations can be used. My advice is to pronounce the stretch figure in your head and hum it. In this way, you can find the correct articulations. I have to point out that these pronunciation techniques can be applied to the woodwinds as well as the brass instruments. So, in the first part, I want to hear this kind of pronunciation. Tiap, tita, tiap. This figure is well suited for both woodwind and string sections. The normal accents have been used to accentuate the first and third piece. The stretch figure is shared between the first and the second violins. As you can see, I didn't do anything different. Just use the stretch method. I arranged the cut tones in each cell one after the other. For example, I used the cut tones of the A major and the C sharp minor in the first bar, then the tones of the D major chord in the second bar. As I said in previous lessons, sometimes you can use passing and neighbor tones if necessary. This is my test. You can start from any pitch of the chord, or you can make quite different zigzags in your texture. Just try to do it. The trombones have been doubled by the violas. Let's check the mock-up without melody and with melody. Now is the time to add the interlay and the overlay variant of the horizontal break to our texture. Thus, some parts of broken chords will be interlaid between horns and trumpet, while upper tones of the chord above the trumpet. This is the chord voicing technique of the woodwind section. You already know about it. The broken harmony has been shared between two bassoons, two clarinets, an English horn and two oboes, two flutes with a piccolo. I place the chords in different pieces of the bar. Maybe you will choose another place. Finally, the timpani and the suspended cymbal can be used to add ornament to our texture.
The half glissando is used for the transition between the fourth and the fifth, seventh and eighth bars. The glissando is notated with stemless notes, indicating that the glissando is to be played roughly between these notes. The harp pedals are tuned to the key of A major. Now is the time to check the final view of the score. Four horns and one trumpet take the melodic device, while other instruments are in the background. The dynamic marking is forte for all instruments, except for the trombones, as I wanted less power. So we have done the orchestration process, let's listen to the texture, then all together. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. If you liked this lecture and want to learn more about these methods, and create different textures of the melody, let's enroll in the course. You can choose one-time or monthly payment masses. Discount coupon links are available on my YouTube and Instagram channels. If you have purchased the first edition of my course on Udemy.com, you can send a request to the following email and get an extra discount. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me at secretsoforchestration at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.